I'm Val DeWar for Cage Side Press here with American Muay Thai sensation and one championship ranked featherweight contender Luke Lisi, who fights Eddie Abasolo in one fight night 19 in just two weeks, February 16th in Bangkok, Thailand. So, hey, I mean, start simple. How you doing? Yeah, I'm good, man. Just uh, finishing out camp, trying to keep everything clean, keep the weight in check and uh, training as hard as I can. I leave in nine days. So, yeah, everything's cool. Yeah, I mean, quick turnaround, uh, but I mean, that's probably nothing new for you in fighting Muay Thai. It's kind of how it yeah. is, but I mean, that was like, you know, probably the biggest fight you've ever had, I'd imagine. I mean, don't see how you can get bigger than that at this stage. Right. Um, I mean, disappointing result in some ways, but also like a really great result in some ways because you, you held your own against one of the best in the world. Just how'd you feel after that, that fight, the loss? You're right. Like you said, disappointing in some ways, um, basically just the fact that there's a one on my record as a loss is the only disappointment and i'm just disappointed that i didn't knock somebody out because every fighter wants that but besides all that dude everything's been fucking great i mean i've been having so much love and positivity i've been gaining fans um fans that have been around they've been like dude we needed this fight from you we needed to see how tough you were and it's cool that i could show my fans that part of me as well instead of like dude Cool, fancy, landing everything on the amateur ship. So they got to they got to see my gangster get tested. Um, so the loyal fans are even more loyal now that they got to see the dog in me. Uh, yeah. And then the new fans, they're like, saw Luke's last fight. Now they're gonna watch my next fight. So because if that fight would have been a quick knockout, I probably would have less people tuning into this next fight. And because all the fights on that card were knockouts. And then the one fight that wasn't a knockout was mine, which was a three round absolute banger fight that you can uh, contender. I think uh, it just makes the story for my career even better. I think it's meant to happen that way. Uh, real rocky moment for me. So I think it's kind of like people's champ energy. And I think more and more people are going to be hopping on board, wanting to see me win. And uh, yeah, I'm putting on for the working man. So Shout out to everybody, uh, new and old, that saw that last fight because that was fucking. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was crazy. Like, I'll say this: as a fan of the sport, combat sports in general, a three round war is what I like more than just one punch knockouts. If I liked one punch knockouts, I'd watch heavyweights, but I like watching three round wars. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was gonna ask about the fans because, I mean, you you have this Instagram account, and you've been building a following for years, but. There's always, I mean, I just sense this, maybe not with you, but with other fighters that, especially for Angs, that there's a sense that you have to like prove yourself to the Thai fans to like, for the traditional fans to accept you, you know? Oh, yeah. uh, have you seen oh, yeah. that? And Dude, years and years, I've been even just comments, need to go to Thailand, need to go international. I'd like to see this dude tested against a real Thai fighter. Like, dude, okay. Like, yeah, other people do Muay Thai too. We all can't just go to Thailand just to do Muay Thai. Um, but I don't know. I feel like eventually people realize long enough they're exposed to you and they're like, okay, he does know what he's doing. And then now my first fight in one was against the Thai freaking number four, uh, well seasoned game tested veteran. And now they can all shut up because the little dude from Iowa went out there. Yeah. If you want to be like he lost and he got fucked up, then you could think that that I went out there and got beat by, the, by a tie, but if you actually know what you're watching and know what you're talking about, um, the pressures that I had on, I just quit my job, went to go do that fight. You know, everything was in the tables for me to get knocked out by him. You saw every other fight. It was almost like there was supposed to, they have 50% knockout rates. They're trying to set up knockouts. I wasn't supposed to do that to Joe. I'm, the, I'm just this dude from Iowa that's getting a shot. I wasn't supposed to do that from my town against the number four ranked guy in the world. And I did okay. So some people say I even could have won. And if there was another round, I would have won. And if it was in the streets, Joe Nanawa would be dead. So I think any fans that think you have to go to Thailand to fight – I mean, yeah, we're just waiting. Us Americans are just waiting for our opportunities, man. Yeah, I'm, well, first you said you did. Okay. I'd say you did more than okay. Um, and like, 
how much confidence do you take from that? I mean, you're going to fight another guy, not, not a guy as like credentialed as Smoking Joe, but a, a you know a well seasoned guy, a guy with much more experience mm-hmm. than you in the game. How much confidence do you take from competing with someone as good as Smoking Joe Natawat? I mean, one of the best guys in the division, experienced two sports, kickboxing, Muay Thai, he's fought the best guys pound for pound in both sports. So yeah, yeah it must I be mean, a confidence booster. Yeah, like I said this, I think I said this in every interview. That was my gang initiation. And I think I'm oh glad boy. it happened that way because I don't want to get into my fourth or fifth fight in one and not be tested. Now I feel like, dude, the whole roster, I'm ready to fight all of them. You know, like I know how hard like, he broke my nose in the second round. And I still was in there. It's like I know how hard he fucking hits. I know I can take a hit. Um, it, a lot of people think he's the hardest hitter in the whole division. And I stood there and took that shit like a champ. Like, you weren't, I didn't get wobbled. You didn't see me get wobbled even once. So I think, of course, that's going to build my confidence. And then another thing, I said this in the last interview, this is really personal for me, is I never knew if I was really tough like that. Mm. Because I've just been doing what my dad said in the gym in the ring doing sports uh you know combat sport sport i thought i was oh i'm good at these moves i'm good at this i'm good at the techniques but can i really fight like that like do i really got that dog in me and obviously we found that out i found that out i didn't know i was that tough you know i remember going into the first round i remember after the first round i was like yo i might get knocked the fuck out i remember thinking that to myself and uh, yeah, I didn't. So now going against other people, of course, everyone can hit hard and everyone can knock you off. But I think nobody probably hits as hard as Joe in the division. I think I yeah. do. <laughs> I mean, of course you do. Yeah, but I don't think I don't think anybody is going to be ready for. Like, if, I think I'm ready for all of them because I wasn't ready for Joe's power. Does that make sense? Yeah. No. I, th- I mean, yeah. you got to go into the fire. Like, there's you can. I, you can spar a lot. You can spar really tough guys. Good? Okay. Yeah, you can... it was just my wife. <laughs> it's all good. I got to answer to her. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can spar. You can do hard sparring, but until you really step into the fire, you're not going to know. So, of course, that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, hey, all right, the next fight. Now you're fighting another guy with a level experience, Mr. Silky Smooth himself. Ebi mm-hmm. Alice Abba Solo just fought Sitichai in his last fight, who's, you know, another one of the best Nakamoy in the world. Does this? It feels surreal, like... You're like, like you said, you want to be built going up against the hard guys, but you know they're definitely not slow playing you at all. Like you see with some prospects in the sports, right, right. And it's like part of you wants that because you want to be a star, you want to get wins, but then another part of you knows that that's kind of a facade. Like, yeah, like are you going the Sugar Sean O'Malley way? <laughs> that was literally my example. I was thinking. Yeah, or are you literally like who who went like murderous raw? Like, I mean, Michael Chandler as soon as he came. Dustin Poirier. Yeah, it does. Like, so I don't know. It's it's when I lay down at night, I think about what I and yeah. I mean, to really be fulfilled when I lay in my deathbed, I want to probably beat the best guys, even though that's fucking scary. I'd rather just fight the easy guys and get the Instagram shit, but. Deep inside, I know that's not what's going to fulfill. So I need to call out people like Eddie, the other American who they think is the best. That needs to be me. I got to get him out of the way first. And then after that, we're going to start going on this Thai fighter hit list. I want to knock out all the ties because in my division, it's ran by ties. Yeah. Alan Chai, Superbon, Joe, and then Sidichai. It's like, yo, we need an American up in there. And, uh, yeah, going against Eddie, I think it's it's a dream come true because I've been watching him for a long time. When I was young, he was just coming out of the pro scene. He was smooth. He was chill. He was one of those guys who didn't focus so much on just being that fucking powerful statue hitting hard. And I've always been like that. Um, I mean... I've been doing that smooth shit before he was doing that smooth shit. Let's just be honest. I've been training for over 20 years now, and I'm only 27. And uh, I think it's time that people people kind of get an answer to 
who's the one? Is it me or is it Eddie? Yeah. Obviously, we're both going to be in the conversation. Like people like us, people people talk about us in the same conversation a lot. When a lot of people, if Eddie's their favorite fighter, I'm probably their second favorite fighter. If I'm their favorite fighter, Eddie's probably their second favorite fighter. So we're right there. And I think it's going to be a fight where the fans are going to be like, damn, we're really about to find out who the smoothest motherfucker out here is. Hey, and I mean, in that vein, like American Muay Thai, it's been growing, especially with one like starting to hold events here, bringing in the American prospects. But I, I noticed in your last fight, they said the commentary said that you're the best uh, American striker, like the best at Muay Thai, kickboxing, whatever. You think yeah. do you think you can like lay claim to that now or do you think you have a bit more to go? Or do you think like this fight is the one that's going to prove it for you that, that that's you? Honestly, I think I am America's best striker because it, it, this has nothing to do with wins and losses. If you if you follow me, you see the the knowledge I have on my page, um, the way I break things down. Not only, yeah, I know I'm good at moves, like anybody can get good at the moves, and I know my style is clean and beautiful, and it's a little more elegant. I think I have a little bit prettier style than fucking everybody, like, Someone else like that, Haggerty. Haggerty keeps his hands up. He's always got a beautiful stance, beautiful technique. And I know I'm like top when it comes to technique. And then when you see the way I'm teaching, the things I talk about, the way I break things down, the perspective I have about the game, the philosophy of you can make it by doing this. You don't have to have any connections. I think all these things are what make me viewed as America's number one. Because I'm actually... I'm breaking down everything that I've done. I'm giving you all the recipes. I'm not holding anything back. I'm not just posting videos of me hitting bags. I'm not just posting videos of me hitting the bags. It's here, throwing shit out on Instagram. I'm spending time. I'm creating a culture. I'm creating a movement. And I'm trying to change the game. Not only by just winning fights. That's the last thing I'm trying to do is win the fights. I'm trying to get better and actually make a difference with this Muay Thai community. And, uh, I think for some reason, for some weird reason, the fans that have been following me on Instagram, they kind of sense that um, and they're sticking around for the ride. And I think that's why it's almost this aura of like, oh, that's America's guy. You know, that's America's number one. But of course, people who really know what they're talking about, who watch fights, they're going to say there's a couple other Americans, you know, Eddie, Asa Tempo, a couple others that are right up in there. You know, even WBC ranked fighters are right up in there too but we're in one championship you got to win in one championship to be the best so once i beat eddie there's going to be no more questions and if you do question it i mean whatever i'll just keep beating people and then it'll just it'll just take a little bit longer for these people to realize i'm america's number one but eventually i'm gonna be america's number one and it won't be like a matter of fact that's the goal goal number one pound for pound america Striking like all over, and uh, yeah, and the goal is to be champion, but the, also the goal is like American Muay Thai. Oh, Luke, that's what I want. You know what I mean? You want to blaze that trail, like I mean, like I said, American Muay Thai is still in, like in the. It's been a long time that it's been like an underground kind of thing, and that's kind of I feel like why you got a lot of popularity on Instagram because Muay Thai fans on Instagram like they're like our sport is kind of disrespected compared to MMA, even compared to boxing, kickboxing. So we got to like stick together. I was talking to my friend who's like, he was watching Muay Thai long before me. He said like, when you got up there, when uh, Liam Nolan got up there, it was like big celebration. Like everyone's like, yeah, Muay Thai's making it, you know? Yeah. The community is a lot stronger in Muay Thai. And I think that's another reason the fans, um, the fans put you on a pedestal and it's fucking cool. Like if you actually are cool, you're, you're teaching good shit. You're not a fraud. The Muay Thai fans are probably the best fans that there is. Yeah, like and, real Muay Thai fans, it's just fucking awesome. They have so much respect for you. And that's how you got, you know, 80k followers. And even like even before you fought in one championship, you got 75k, 80k followers, and that got helped get you that chance to show them what you know. Yeah. Um, and all right, so I want to pivot a bit to your dad. I mean, so we're talking about American Muay Thai. He was doing it, you know, way back in the day. It sounds like so. Uh, I mean, I know he started training you. How did he get into the sport? What? Yeah. So, yeah, he started, like, back in the fucking 80s and shit. Everyone's watching Bruce Lee movies, samurai movies, <laughs> kung fu movies. That's originally how he started with his buddies. And then um, that planted the seed. And then he went on this you know, lifelong journey of 
traditional martial arts being trained under Guru Danin Osano, who's under Bruce Lee with Filipino Kali and Eskrima. And then Jeet Kune Do, which is Bruce Lee's lineage, obviously. And then also when he got exposed to Muay Thai, the guy who, the guy who brought Muay Thai to America in 1969, uh, a guy named Ajahn Surachai Surasut, who he was training with the Dallas Cowboys back in like the 60s and shit like that. And training like the Hells Angels uh, gangs way back in the day. But yeah, that those are my dad's teachers. Bruce Lee lineage. And he just went all in. He dove all in. All different types of martial arts. Jiu-Jitsu, boxing, karate, Muay Thai, the scream up, you know, fighting with the sticks and weapons. And then he became a pro fighter. I had a couple of fights. And then had me and my sister. And then created this blueprint. I don't know what he thought when I was born, but he was like, you're going to be a fighter. And then rest is history i turned four he got me in the gym and been like chasing that ever since he's been training me ever since never uh, looked yeah, back my dad, yeah, my dad has just randomly got implanted with a passion for martial arts and then that was passed on to me i love it and so we're almost out of time but last question so the fight's two weeks last time you said quick ko or a violent war it ended up being a violent war what's your prediction this time Dude, it's funny because it could be the same. It's like, yeah. this, this could be a crazy, this could be another fight of the year. But now, the last fight was my first fight in small gloves against Joe. So there's a little bit different energy there. This fight, I might take a little more risks. I might really go for a, a setup or a knock. It's hard to take a risk when the number four ranked tie guy is trying to knock you out. I was nervous. So it ended up being a back and forth. So I think I have a bigger chance in finishing. Yeah. So there's less nerves. First five jitters are out. I'm going to take some more chances. Um, yeah, I think the risk and reward is going to be there. I'm going to I'm going to throw some big shots. I'm going to hit some big setups. And I I think I can get Eddie out of there before the fights. So I think I can I think I can make him look not so smooth because he'll be laying there motionless. How <laughs> smooth the king is smooth. And uh, so, what do you think? In first round, or you, you, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, end of the second or third. Got to build into it, yeah. Hey, and like, yeah, the small gloves, you gotta feel it out. I know it's a lot different, but now especially that you have that us, experience, especially with us, we're smart. We're we're gonna be like, we know, we know what the fuck is. We're we're not gonna come right at each other. Who knows? Got to be ready for anything. But that first round might be complete chess match. You know what I mean? So. Obviously, if you saw me, the longer the fight goes, uh, the more comfortable, the more powerful I get. So if it gets into that third round, you might yeah. see a knockout, you know? Yeah. I mean, hey, that's when you, you almost knocked Joe out there in that late in that third round. But all right, I don't want to want to take up all your time. So I'm going to let you go. But can't wait for the fight, man. It, it's been Thank great you. talking to you. Oh, that was a good talk, man. Thanks. Good questions. Man. Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. Have a good one. Have a good one, man.